Welcome back to the deep dive. So we got a bunch of articles from you guys about solar. Yeah, it looks like people are really trying to figure out this whole tier one ranking thing for solar panels. Yeah, and if it even like matters anymore, mm. especially with some of these huge companies coming back to the solar market. You know, the ones that like everybody already knows. Right. And a lot of you sent us this article, is it time to knock tier one on the head? <laughs> I thought that was really interesting. Yeah. And then right off the bat, the author makes this point, and it made me laugh because it's true. Like, we don't have tier one lists when we're buying, I don't know, a car. Right. Exactly. Or chocolate. So what's the deal with solar? Yeah. So th the article kind of digs into the history of this, and it says, like, back in uh, 2013, 2014, there were a lot of solar companies that, like, went out of business. Oh, really? Yeah. And it was kind of a like a shaky time for the industry. So they came up with this tier one list as a way to like show buyers which manufacturers were, you know, stable. Like not going to just disappear. Exactly. Like they had the financial backing to actually stay around. Right. And, you know, so people could feel comfortable making this big investment. A long-term investment, yeah. Right, because you don't want to put solar panels on your roof and then the company goes bankrupt and you can't get your warranty on it or something. Right, exactly. So it's like a reassurance thing. You know? Yeah. Okay, this is a solid company. They're not going anywhere. Yeah. But here's the thing, and the article talks about this too. Being on the Tier 1 list, it's just a snapshot. It's just like a three-month ranking. Or, you know, it's not like a lifetime achievement award or anything. So just because they're tier one one day doesn't mean they're going to be tier one forever. Exactly. And actually, and this is crazy, the article points out that some of the companies that were like big proponents of the tier one system actually yeah. ended up going out of business themselves. Wow. Oh, the irony. <laughs> like, come on, guys. But yeah, it makes you wonder, like, how much should we actually trust this whole tier one thing? Right. Especially now with, like you were saying before, some of these massive companies that everybody already knows are getting back into solar. Like mm -hmm. you mentioned Hinsense, Wiesman, LG, Samsung, Panasonic. These are like huge companies. I mean, everybody knows these names. Right. And they're not just like big companies. They're like what the article calls bankable companies, yeah. meaning they've got a proven track record, you know, like 50 plus years of being successful in other industries. So, like, banks trust them. Exactly. Banks trust them. Investors trust them. And that means, like, it's easier to get financing for your solar project if you go with one of these companies. And probably get better interest rates, too. Right. And they can offer longer warranties, maybe even better warranties, because they've got the financial stability to back it up. Oh, so for people listening, if you're thinking about going solar, this is something to consider. Like, maybe you should look at these big companies with, like, that long track record because mm -hmm. it might actually save you money in the long run. Right. And, you know, the other thing the article mentions is that a lot of these companies are really leading the way in terms of like ethical sourcing and sustainability. Which like more and more people are caring about. Right. So if that's something that's important to you, then that's another reason to maybe look beyond the tier one label and consider these bigger brands. So with all this in mind, the article asks a pretty big question. Like, if we can judge these companies based on their existing reputation, their financial stability, and, you know, if they're doing things ethically, then do we even need this tier one list anymore? Right. Like maybe it's time to retire that whole system because honestly, it might be a little misleading. You know, it makes it seem like these are the only companies that are reliable, but that's not necessarily true. So what can people listening take away from all this? Like what's the bottom line? I think the biggest takeaway is, like, don't just blindly trust the Tier 1 label. Don't just assume that's the only thing that matters. Exactly. Like, do your research. Yeah, do your homework. Look into the company's history. Like, how long have they been around? Are they financially stable? What are their ethical practices like? You know, all of that stuff is important. Yeah, get the full picture. Exactly. And, you know, maybe, just maybe, this whole conversation will start to shift things in the industry. You know, like... Maybe we can move beyond these simplistic rankings and start looking at more meaningful indicators of quality and reliability. Right, like the stuff we're talking about, yeah. the bigger picture. Well, thanks for joining us on this deep dive. Yeah, thanks for listening. And, you know, maybe after hearing all this, you have your own thoughts about what really matters when choosing solar panels. Do you still think Tier 1 is the be-all and end-all? Or is it time for something new? Let us know what you think. Yeah, we'd love to hear your thoughts. See you next time on The Deep Dive. See you.